Hey, I'm Aiden, the next gen collector. And today, we have another unboxing and just overall haul recap of a bunch of DC and indie goodness that I've been picking up on the low. Um, I preemptively opened this one uh, for us today. If you guys know, there is a particular indie series that I've been collecting. We are very close in completing the run. Um, and that is in this package right here. Two major keys uh, that I had left in this run. Oh. Off to a tremendous start here. Um, I don't know how much of that I bleeped out, but this this guy used like this packing, like actual packing tape on this. And it's like, oh my God. Ugh. All right, so we just navigated that nightmare, but we actually have two books here in the Invincible Run that brings our total number of books down that we need for total completion uh, would be 18. But first up, we have Invincible number nine here, who I know Brandon over at Mon Comics has. This is the first appearance of uh, Monster Girl and someone else I'm blanking totally on the top of my head, but I know it's Monster Girl because she's right on the cover. Invincible number nine, for some reason, I feel like this book is like, like the like ratio of like how these first appearance of characters are in the first like first 10, 20 issues. This one is like one of the few that is in the upper echelon that's like a lot more than others for whatever reason. Um, it's really surprising because I mean, there's other books that have like the first, like Invincible number six, for example, is way less than this one. Um, but I got a screaming deal on it. Uh, I got both these books for 160 shipped. So it was really 150 um, plus the shipping. Uh, which is really good. So, this one number nine, first Monster Girl. Super happy to have this one. Um, got a nice Mylar double bagged, very nice premium product here. Next up is one that I've been eyeing for so long. I've just been waiting to get it for a good price. Um, and I finally did, combining it with that other one. We have Invincible number 19. This is one where the significance is actually not on the cover, it's on the interior. If you watch the show, you definitely know who this character is. One of my favorites, you can't see him because he's on a cover right here, but he's the first appearance of Battle Beast. Um, this will number 19. Um, this is also still before Ryan Otley was doing the covers, um, but oh, I'm so happy to finally have this one. This is usually a $110 book. Um, got them both for 80 bucks a piece, um, if that's math works correctly. That includes the shipping, so it was really 75 a piece um, plus shipping. Whatever, 160 all in for both of these. Um, super happy to get these in the collection. Brings our total down to 18 books left. My goal this year, I forgot to put it in my freaking recap video, um, like some on check mark point whatever, is I wanna complete the run from six up, six to 144. I wanna just have one through five left, which I'm thinking about, I mean, I, I still think I can do it. These were two of the bigger ones I still needed, but uh, I don't know, we'll see. I basically wanna have five left. That's kind of like the number. I wanna have five left going into the next year. One and two, obviously, because one's obviously over a thousand dollars, give or take, and the grade I want. Um, two is about a 250 to $500 book, depending on the grade. Um, three is usually not that bad, it's under a hundred bucks. Four is usually, I mean, he's around that 70 price range because the cover's not that great. Five is first Alan Alien. That's about $150, $100 book, um, probably raw. And then the more expensive ones left are like 12, uh, 11. That one's like a $200 book. Um, but we'll see. I, I might try to save the five most expensive ones last, or I mean, it's all just dependent on where, what deals show up. But so you're happy to get these, but that does not end there. We actually have a stack of other indie books and DC books uh, to go over. You're gonna wanna stick around to the end because some of these are bangers and the deals I got them for. All right, we're gonna start off with the indie books and then work our way to the DC. Keep it an indie. We have like Tech Jacket Volume 2, number four. I got this in like a dollar bin. It's all, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, just kind of wanted that theme of Invincible books, you know, that same universe. Burp almost took me out there. Next up, also Dollar Man, Radiant Black number four. Um, I'm not gonna give away um, the key significance of this one right here, um, but it's kind of like where the twist in the first volume happens, and that's like the, my favorite part of the first volume was this, I guess, issue. Um, so Hooper Fabley, Hooper Fabley, super happy to found this one in the dollar bin. Next up is a book I literally just won in like a giveaway and whatnot. Um, it is Junk Rabbit number one. No idea what it is. 
Uh, I hope to read it at some point. I'll add it to the stack of books I gotta read. But uh, um, looks like some sort of humanoid or kind of guy with a junk rabbit head on. Not really sure. Um, I don't know. Well, leave me down in the comments if you know if this one's good. And next up is a series by the same author as Something is Killing a Children. We have James Tinian's and Michael Dan Daly Nass. I don't know. I probably butchered it, but I guess it's pronounced wind. Um, I got this in one hour stream. I paid way too much for it. Um, I paid like a dollar or two, but then the shipping killed me. So I was like $8 all in on this. Um, but I actually reached out to the shop and asked them to put another book, um, into my package that they're already sending with that eight dollar shipping and they did so i'll get to that in a minute but got this from a whatnot stream from nirvana comics i'm um, excited to read this one i actually got issue number two at a con i was just at so hopefully i can read them back to back here at some point whenever i get the chance and that other book that i asked nirvana comics to put in my um box is actually from a local artist um from the knoxville area i lived in knoxville for about five years like to call that place home uh went to school there but we have benny and the lynch by matt styles and andy gordon knoxville natives intergalactic publishing one of one indie story um i haven't had a chance to read it i'm very excited to it's very high on my list once i get through some of my trade paperbacks i'm burning through right now and then i'm going to go back to these single issue one shot sort of stuff beautiful art on the cover here i just i mean i really i just fell in love with the cover um and then once I figured out it was a local Knoxville native thing, I was like, I had to support. But if you're interested in reading this for yourself, you can go ahead and just look up Benny and the Lynch online. Um, they should still have, I think their fundraiser thing is already done, but I think you can buy it direct um, from their website of some sort. You know, a little bit of typing away on your computer, you can figure it out. You can get this online directly from the creators. Next indie book up I actually learned was a key from Ricky of all sorts of words on a random live stream I believe he was hosting, but is Dark Horse Presents number one. This is actually like a double key. So this is just the first published work from Dark Horse Comics. Dark Horse Presents Black Cross, um, first appearance of Black Cross, so double key, but then triple key, this is actually the first appearance of Concrete. Uh, that's another series I'm, or character, whatever, I really want to read. Um, just because, I mean, I'm trying to read those award-winning series right there, my essential reading. Um, but yeah, super happy to get this one. Got this one from Cosmic Comics. Uh, I basically asked him, hey, you got it. Went to his database, found it, dug it out for me. Nice near minty goodness. Um, so super happy to get this one. And it's funny enough, I went to a con today. Uh, I, I swear I've never seen this book before, just anywhere. I asked him to dig it out for me, got it, whatever. I saw tons of booths with these marking them like 20 25 dollars like i don't know i don't know if there's like a micro niche people that somehow this new like we all some everyone at once wanted this book um but i don't know super cool happy to add this to my sort of indie collection i'm putting together next book i really won't stay on too long because i know a lot of people won't care but we actually the first appearance of jujutsu kaisen the anime and weekly shonen jump number uh 14 in the year 2000 something I don't know, but super cool issue because it actually has uh, uh, two of the main characters on the cover with their first appearance, which a lot of these Shonen Jumps do not have that for their first um, uh, first appearances, don't have the characters on the cover. It usually has probably the more mainstream stuff at the time, but we have Ichidori and Megami here. Super cool, but let's go ahead and get into the DC books because I know a lot of you guys do not care about this. A couple more books I got for a buck a piece, uh, or not buck a piece. I mean, it was like maybe one to two dollars in a whatnot stream from nirvana comics we have superman son of Kal -El, number one i know this was a hot book for a while i think it got all the way up to like 15 dollars um i got it for i mean lower than sticker price this cool homage to superman number one his son um say what you want about him whatever it's still cool because it's superman's son i mean this what more can you say so i mean for like a buck for a has-been key why not and then we actually got superman number 123 um no not that Superman 123 with this one. Uh, this is actually like this first appearance of this blue costume he had when, during this run. Um, or is this Superman 123? I think so. I mean, uh, I could be tripping. But yeah, I mean, cool DC key to pick up for less than a couple bucks. Um, the last one I actually got from N. Wilson Comics. We have the first appearance in Green Lantern core number, what do we have? 201. First appearance of Kilowog. Pretty neat, huh? got this for $30 but I think he cut we you know I got a bulk deal so it probably came closer to like 20 25 dollars uh super crisp copy though super happy to get this into my DC key collection I'm kind of putting together as well too getting a lot of cool stuff um in the DC realm recently hopefully before they all jump up way too much because I, I 
I think people are kind of underestimating um, the like the the room for growth on those books. Everyone's like, oh, this is down market, blah, blah, blah. People got to realize like books weren't jumping insane whenever the MCU first came out. It's when, I mean, you have to give it time to simmer. Um, so they, they might be spiking a little bit now, but some of these other books, I mean, there's so much room to grow. Um, Cause I mean, there's a chance that the next generation, you know, after me, they're all gonna be DC kids cause they will be the movies they're growing up with that are actually good. Uh, shots at Marvel, I guess. But happy to get this one. Next book I got here was for a screaming deal over on Macari. If you guys are not using Macari to try to find the deals, hate the, you know, give away the online honey hole. Um, you can get some crazy good sting of deals on here. Everything, every single posting is sent an offer on. So I just offered the lowest possible and they took it immediately and actually got a really nice freebie book with it as well. Um, it is a first issue, first appearance of a amazing series written by Neil Gaiman, iconic, essential reading, I would say. It has been amazing. Go pick it up at your local library. Uh, go read the trade paperbacks. Everyone has one. Every library, that is. We actually got Sandman number one in a CGC 8.0. I paid $60 for this. I sent them a $60 offer, and they took it. Um, and it's a really good looking 8.0 too. Really don't see many issues. Um, I was considering cracking this out, but um, I'm thinking about doing that with the gum, some different slab. So I needed something to put up on the shelf to kind of keep the symmetry going with the slab. So it'll probably go in up there replacing uh, probably one of these Invincible books because uh, I absolutely loved this series. I'm on volume three. I will be on volume three once I check it out and read it, whatever. I finished first two volumes, absolutely loved it. I want to burn through all of them. Um, just like uh, Saga, it's just one of those series I cannot put down once I start reading it. Um, but super awesome. Sandman, number one. Neil Gaiman story, Sam Keith and Michael Drinberg art and Dave McKean cover. Dave McKean's covers on this series are like crazy. Um, I mean, I mean, as you can see, it's just very abstract stuff kind of going on on all of them. Um, he also does, you know, you might be familiar with his Hellblazer uh, art as well. I and mean, it's not the same artist as on Hellblazer. That's me just taking a guess because it's so unique. But that concludes our pickups today. Let me know what your favorite pickup was. Is it this DC quintessential key here in Sandman for experience of Morpheus? Or out of left field, is it this good old anime first appearance manga goodness with the first appearance of JJK? Or are you a fan of this early invincible goodness here? You're gonna have to let me down in the comments. And while you're just going down, give me a like, go ahead and subscribe, hit the bell, even though it's Mondays at 10 a.m. All the time, all the time. Don't even really need the bell because it's Mondays at 10 a.m. I'll be there. At least I'll try to be. I haven't missed a day yet since I set that schedule. But anyway, I'm talking way too long. I'm gonna go ahead and just get the outro rolling, but. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate all the support. Love you. Bye.